Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and led them up to high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with him. And Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate, but they were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise, and do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, Do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Today the Apostles see a glimpse of Jesus' divinity shine through his humanity. But not all the Apostles witness this. Jesus chooses only three, Peter, James, and John. Why these three over the other nine? It's a very deliberate choice on Jesus' part. Jesus chooses Peter, the first Pope, the one who first identified Jesus as the Messiah. Jesus chooses John, the Beloved. John, the teenage kid who's just on fire in love with the Lord. John, who will be the only apostle not to suffer martyrdom, but will die in exile on the island of Patmos. And Jesus chooses James, John's older brother, who will be the first bishop of Jerusalem and the first of the apostles to be martyred. These three apostles will have very key roles in the early church. So Jesus takes them and Jesus allows them to see his divinity to give them strength for the approaching crucifixion, and also to give them strength for the roles they will fulfill afterwards. Another reason Jesus does this is because Jesus is letting them see the finished product ahead of time so they have the goal to shoot for later. Jesus lets them see his transfigured glory to give us a vision of what awaits us so we can be reminded in the dark times of what we're striving to become. That's right, what we are striving to become. God's true nature is divine. But in Jesus, God also took on a human nature to save us. Our true nature is human. But Jesus shedding his blood for us and sharing it with us in the Eucharist enables us to share his life and his divinity. So as Jesus was transfigured in glory, so we also hope to become someday. Well, how do we do this? How do we undergo this transfiguration? charity. We become transfigured through charity. This is a consistent theme all throughout Lent. There are three different kinds of charity we need to embrace. The first is charity of the mind. Charity of the mind is combating abrasiveness and negativity. These can be devastating to the spiritual life because what these tendencies often cloak is self-loathing. The reason we're abrasive to people, the reason we're negative to people out there, is because we're really angry or sad about what I see in here. Peter is the perfect example of this. Peter the loudmouth. Peter the abrasive one. Peter who pretends to be so sure of himself but in reality isn't. He denies Jesus three times the evening of the crucifixion. And he won't stop beating himself up over it until Jesus appears to them and asks Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Three times he asks, and three times he makes Peter answer, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Peter, stop looking at yourself. Look at me. Keep your eyes fixed on me, Peter, and let me worry about fixing you exact same thing happened when Peter walked on water. 
Jesus is walking on water toward the apostles in the boat. Peter, the loud mouth, the outspoken one, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you across the waves. Jesus says, come on. And first, Peter is doing it. He's walking on water. When does he start to sink? Then Peter took account of the wind and the waves, and perceiving how strong they were, he began to sink. As soon as Peter takes his eyes off of Jesus and on the world around him, he begins to sink. Keep your eyes fixed on me, Peter, and you won't sink. Jesus is saying the same thing to him here. This is how we develop charity of the mind, through contrition and keeping our eyes on Christ. We look in here only to see what needs to be fixed and give that to the Lord in trust. People who suffer from self-loathing don't like themselves, but they also don't trust anybody else, including God, so they stay trapped. Once Peter learns to trust God, he develops charity of the mind, and he becomes the great leader that God wants him to be. The second form of charity we need to embrace is charity of the heart. Charity of the heart is forgiveness, forgiving ourselves and forgiving others. Many times we can't grow in the spiritual life because we're holding on to unforgiveness. We may not even realize we're doing it. Why do I have to keep, why do I keep having to drag the same old sins to confession again and again and again? Can it be because of unforgiveness? Could it be that even though I've said on my tongue that I forgive people who have wronged me in the past, my heart is still holding on to a grudge? Could it be that I haven't forgiven God for something? That's also true. Now I know as you do, God doesn't need our forgiveness for anything because God is not capable of sin by his very nature. But can any of us honestly say that emotionally we've never blamed God for anything? Maybe it's when somebody we love died and we got mad at God. Or maybe we didn't turn out the way we wanted or our lives didn't turn out the way we wanted. Or maybe we never found someone to marry and have a family with like we wanted. And deep inside, even though we never said the words, we're really mad at God for it. We need to come to terms with that. We need to take that to prayer and say to God, you know, I was angry over this and I'm sorry. Help me get past this. The person who personifies this best is John. John in the Gospels is a rather unforgiving person. Lord, we saw somebody casting out a demon in your name and he's not of our company. Shall we go tell him to stop? Lord, when the Samaritans won't let them pass through, uh, pass through their village. Lord, shall we call down fire from heaven to consume them? That's John on fire on fire with his anger, on fire with his unforgiveness. And yet in, the, in his gospel, St. John talks more about love than any of the other three evangelists. When John embraces charity of the heart, he can become the great lover that God wants him to be. And finally, the last form of charity is charity of the body, that is contribution. Because in contribution, we have to sacrifice something for ourselves to the benefit of someone else. The, apostles who the, the apostle who personifies this best is St. James, the third apostle of the Transfiguration. Remember, it's James, the first of the apostles to be martyred. So he made the ultimate sacrifice of flesh. James, in his epistle, writes very clearly that our faith must be expressed in tangible ways. Quoting James chapter 2 directly, What good is it, my brothers, if somebody says that he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or a sister has nothing to wear and has no food for the day, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm, and eat well, but you do not give them the necessities of the body, what good is it? So faith of itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Words of St. James. And Jesus chooses these three apostles in particular to witness the transfiguration because these are also the three who struggled most with charity.
Peter is scandalized by the cross when Jesus tries to prepare them for his imminent crucifixion right after Peter identified him as the Messiah. James and John are always passing judgment on others. And so if we want to experience transfiguration, we must also strive to embrace charity in all aspects of our lives. Charity in thought, charity in heart, and charity in body. I pray today, my brothers and sisters, that we all go through such a transfiguration. And blessed be God forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.